today we're going to look at a pretty nice functional differential equation. Now, functional equations are common in math contests. And of course, differential equations have numerous applications in the physical sciences, as well as the biological sciences and engineering. And there are standard undergraduate courses in differential equations, but functional differential equations are more of a niche topic. And in fact, it's kind of a hard subject. That being said, this functional differential equation we'll look at has some fairly nice solutions. We won't find all of them because I believe that there are infinitely many different types of solutions, but we will explore this one equation. Okay, so let's see what we have. We'll explore this functional differential equation defined by f of 2x equals f prime of x times f double prime of x. And we'll look at three special types of solutions, a polynomial solution, an exponential solution, and a trigonometric solution, and then look at a power series solution that will maybe somehow generalize all of them simultaneously. Okay, so let's start with this polynomial solution. So let's say that f of x is a polynomial. I'll write that by saying that it's in R adjoin x. So this is just the space of polynomials where the coefficients are real numbers. Furthermore, uh, polynomials have a certain measurement called the degree. That's the largest power of x present. So let's say that the degree of f of x is equal to n. And furthermore, the degree of the product of two polynomials is the sum of the degrees. So that's pretty clear just by how polynomial multiplication works. So maybe applying the degree operator to both sides of this equation should help us out a little bit. Okay, so let's notice that the degree of f of 2x is also equal to n. That's because composing 2x inside of f of x won't change the degree. But then the degree of f prime of x times f double prime of x is equal to the degree of f prime of x plus the degree of f double prime of x. That's from this multiplication to addition rule that I just mentioned earlier. But we know exactly what the derivative does to the degree. It decreases it by exactly one. Or maybe I guess I should say it decreases it by at least one. But we know exactly what the derivative does to the degree. It decreases it by exactly one. So that means here we can say this degree of f prime is equal to n minus one. And this degree of f double prime is equal to n minus two. But look at what we've just built. We've built an equation for the degree of our polynomial. Now, it's pretty easy to solve that equation. Notice that this simplifies to n equals 2n minus 3, and thus n is equal to 3. So that means that if we have a polynomial solution, it's not clear yet that we actually have a polynomial solution, but if we have a polynomial solution, it will be a third degree polynomial or a cubic polynomial. Okay, so now let's see if we can find a polynomial solution. So let's set f of x equal to an arbitrary cubic polynomial. I'll write that as ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now let's impose this condition over here. So f evaluated at 2x will be equal to 8 a times x cubed, and then we'll have 4b times x squared, because we have to square 2 as well, and then we'll have 2c times x plus d. And then that has to be equal to the product of f prime and f double prime. So f prime is 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c, and f double prime, well, that's gonna be the derivative of f prime. In other words, 6ax plus 2b. So we have something like this. Now we'll multiply out everything on the right-hand side of the equation. 
So let's see what the x cubed term will be. Well, the only way to achieve x cubed is 3a times 6a. So we have 18a squared times x cubed. That's the only x cubed term. But we can achieve x squared two ways. We can achieve it by 3ax squared times 2b and 2b times 6a or 2bx times 6ax. Okay, so we have something like this. 6ab plus, let's see, that's gonna be 12ab. So in other words, 18abx squared. That's our x squared term. But now what's our x term? We can again achieve that two different ways. We'll have 2bx times 2b, and we'll have 6ax times c. So that'll give us 6ac plus 4b squared x. And then finally, we can only achieve a constant term one way, and that will be with 2b times c. So we have plus 2bc. Okay. But now we can set the coefficients of all of the powers of x equal to each other. So we'll have 8a is the same thing as 18a squared. So that's one equation. We'll have 4b is the same thing as 18ab. Then we'll next have 2c must be equal to 6ac plus 4b squared. And then finally, d must be equal to 2bc. So that gives us a system of four equations and four unknowns. And now let's solve these one at a time. So the equation exhibited by this blue box is as follows. We'll have 18a squared equals 8a. Well, let's notice that a is definitely not equal to zero because if a were equal to zero in our original description of our function, then f would not be a degree three polynomial. It would be a lower degree polynomial, but we've already proven that f is a degree three polynomial. So needless to say, a is not equal to zero. So that means we can divide by a and in fact, after moving some things around, what we get is a equals four over nine. Okay, so that's good. We've got our first value for one of our coefficients. a is equal to four over nine. And now let's see what the purple boxed equation gives us now. So this purple boxed equation is gonna simplify a bit. So we'll have 4b is equal to 18ab, but we know a is four over nine. So let's see, 18a will be eight, so we'll have 8b. And so this purple boxed equation here, exhibited by the x squared terms, simplifies to 4b equals 8b. But of course, there's only a single number that satisfies that equation, and that is b equals zero. So now, that we, now we see that b must be equal to zero. And now let's move on to our x terms and see what we get out of that. So let's see. We see that we have 2c over here and then 6ac plus 4b squared. That being said, we already showed that b was equal to zero, so this simplifies quite a bit already. Notice we can divide two for both sides, and that'll leave us with c is equal to three times a times c. But we know a is equal to four over nine, multiplying this by three will give us four over three, so we have c is equal to four over three c. But again, there's only a single number that satisfies that equation, and that is c equals zero. So we've got our value for a, b, and c. Let's determine our value for d. So let's see, we have d is equal to two times b times c, but let's recall that we've already determined that b and c are both equal to zero, which means immediately we see that d is equal to zero. 
So the only coefficient in this function, which is not zero, is the coefficient of a, and we've determined that that is four ninths. So in the end, we have our unique polynomial solution, which is f of x equals four over nine times x cubed. Okay, so now let's explore the exponential solutions. So let's start by assuming that we've got a general exponential solution. I'll call it f of x is equal to some constant times e to the kx. I'll go ahead and keep our constant c and k as real numbers, but you could work over complex numbers if you wanted to. Okay, so now let's develop these two objects over here. So f evaluated at 2x, f prime, and f double prime. So f evaluated at 2x will be c times e to the 2kx. We replaced x with 2x. Then the first derivative of f is c times k e to the kx. And then the second derivative will simply be the derivative of the first derivative. That'll give us c times k squared times e to the kx. So we're left with something like that. But now let's recall that an exponential function is never equal to zero. So that means we can divide by the exponential function. Let's multiply this entire equation by one over kx. And let's see what that leaves us with. Over here on the left hand side, we'll simply have our number c that we started with. And then on the right hand side, we'll have c squared times k cubed. Now again, we don't wanna consider the case when c is equal to zero, because if c is equal to zero, then our whole function is equal to zero. But that's a boring solution. That's what we would call the trivial solution. So since we don't wanna look at the case when c is equal to zero, we're allowed to divide both sides of this equation by c, maybe by c squared. So that's gonna give us one over c equals k cubed. So something like that. But now notice if c is not equal to zero, then k is also not equal to zero, which perhaps gives us a little nicer way of writing this. I would say a little nicer way of writing this would be c equals one over k cubed. Either way we have it, we have like a free parameter here. And I think this is maybe the nicer way of writing this free parameter. So in the end, we have our exponential solution given by those, or that relationship between c and k. We have f of x is one over k cubed times e to the kx. So if we have an exponential solution, it has to be of that form. So let's quickly notice that we've got some nice examples of that. So the first nice example of this exponential function would be just if we take k equals one, so f of x is e to the x. We could also have f of x be equal to, let's see, eight times e to the x over two, or perhaps f of x is equal to one over 27 times e to the three x. But of course we've got this infinite family over here. So these are just examples of this infinite family. Okay, so I'm actually gonna leave this trigonometric solution as a bit of a homework exercise. So maybe post in the comments if you find a single trigonometric solution or an infinite family of trigonometric solutions. And we'll finish this video off by exploring a power series solution. So for our power series solution, we're going to suppose that f of x is expanded as a power series centered at x equals zero. So we can write it as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a sub n times x to the n. Okay. But now let's start populating the parts of this equation. That tells us that f evaluated at 2x is equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two to the n, a sub n, x to the n. And then next, the derivative f prime can be calculated via term by term differentiation. That'll be the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n times a sub n times x to the n minus one. 
So again, that's just using the power rule for each term. I can get rid of the zeroth term because the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay. But sometimes what we'd like to do is re-index this so things work out more nicely, and that's exactly what we'll do. We will re-index this sum, which is describing the derivative, by replacing all of the n's with n plus 1. So that gives us the following version of our derivative. We'll have the sum, now n is starting at 0 and going to infinity. We'll have n plus 1, a sub n plus 1, times x to the n. Okay, and then likewise, we can take the second derivative, and after the same sort of process of term-by-term -term differentiation and re-indexing, we'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of n plus one times n plus two times a sub n plus two times x to the n. Okay, and now to build our equation over here, we'll have f of 2x, which is this term, equals f prime times f double prime, but we'll use their series expansions. So let's start the top of the next board with that equation. So this is the equation that we ended the last board on. We've got our f of 2x exhibited as our power series equals f prime times f double prime. But now from here, we'll do this product of these two infinite power series on the right-hand side using something called Cauchy's formula for the product of two series. But what we have is the following expansion, the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, and then the coefficients of x to the n are exhibited by finite sums. So I'll index those by m. So the sum as m goes from zero up to n of, we'll have m plus one, n minus m plus one, n minus m plus two, a sub m plus one, a sub n minus m plus two. And then that's our entire coefficient of x to the n. Okay. Then from here, we'll take the coefficient of x to the n on both sides of the equation. So over here on the left, it's simply 2 to the n times a sub n. And over here on the right, it's this big sum. So that gives us the following maybe like recursive definition for a sub n, or maybe you could think of it as a system of infinitely many nonlinear equations in infinitely many unknowns. Okay, so any way you look at it, we have 2 to the n a sub n equals our sum as m goes from 0 to n, then we'll have m plus 1, n minus m plus 1, n minus m plus 2, a sub m plus 1, a sub n minus m plus 2. And as long as the coefficients of our power series satisfy this really complicated equation, then our function will satisfy this functional differential equation. Now, let's notice that this polynomial function is simply the power series where a sub 3 is equal to 4 ninths, and all of the other a's are 0. And that satisfies this system of equations. And then furthermore, all of these exponential functions also satisfy these equations. And so even looking at that, it's pretty clear that our functional differential equation has a large family of solutions. So maybe before we end the video, let's look at a couple of these first equations given by maybe n equals zero and n equals two. I'll let you fill in the rest if you want to. So the n equals zero equation is a sub zero equals two, a sub one times a sub two. The n equals two equation, for example, is four a sub two equals 18 a2 a3 and then plus 12 a1 a4. So one thing to point out here that's pretty clear by these two examples but is maybe not as clear by this setup here is that the two indices always add up to the same thing. That's like an invariant of this like setup. So two plus three is five, one plus four is five. 
And furthermore, five is three more than two. We've got the same kind of thing going on here. One plus two is three, which is three more than zero. And in fact, you can see that happening over here as well. So notice that m plus one plus n minus m plus two is n plus three. And that's of course exactly three more than n over here. So we really do have some sort of nice recursive relationship that's governing these coefficients. Now, if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider subscribing and also leave a comment and a like. That really helps the channel out. Also, I've got a second channel that's mostly focused on learning and course material. It's called Math Major. It's linked in the description if you'd like to check that out also. And finally, you can support the channel and everything we do over here on Patreon. And that's a good place to stop.